Hello everyone, it's Ashwin Rao. Today's shoe rambling video takes us to Indonesia to a bootmaker that has emerged from a pack of extremely talented makers coming out of Bandung and Jakarta, Indonesia. This is a group of individuals who all seem to know each other. They form a kind of brotherhood of boot and shoemaking from that region and this is Renav Goods Co. And this is their Cherry Bison Loafer. You can see this is a Belgian style loafer that I was able to get from Ray Naviri who is the founder of Renav Goods Co. And you can see that this is just a lovely rugged loafer offering and so when I came across this makeup last summer, I reached out to Ray because I was very interested in his approach to shoemaking. I've actually owned a number of Renav Goods Co. shoes, including my pair in last year's Stitch Down Thunderdome. And I've always found his construction is to punch well above his uh, weight class, so to speak, in terms of pricing. I came across this particular style last summer, as I mentioned. Um, I thought that this was a really cool design as a rugged Belgian style loafer. So, you know, it has really no apron. It's got this piping across the top edge of the collar here onto the, um, essentially the, the, the tongue, which is integrated into the vamp. So this is essentially a hole cut with only one other piece of leather to join the back seam here. And um, I just thought this was a cool view. And so he had a pair that he was putting up that had more standard uh, flat wall construction. And I wanted to say, hey, maybe we can try doing something a little bit more rugged using a doctor sole raw cord half sole to kind of give it a little bit of definition and narrowing along the, the waist. But then to use Ray's incredible welt stitch. This is his... Uh, Veltschuin construction that you can see. I'm going to pull in close, but you can see how clean his detailing is on that stitching. Now, different makers, including Onderhood, who I'm going to feature shoe soon on one of my shoe ramblings, have different levels of fit and finish and how they place their stitches um, on their outsole stitching. Ray has become known for a very high stitch density in this double row Veltschuin stitch. And I really just love the look of that 180 to 270 degree transition. You know, you can see the leather at the 180 point here uh, around the edge of the shoe, basically going halfway around the shoe. And then the stitch down continuing in that second layer where the outer stitch continues all the way to about 270 degrees to the heel block. I just find that that design is very aesthetically pleasing. Now you can see that this boot employs a more rounded last here. You can see the rounded shape of the last and the toe box here. And a medium instep. I find that this instep is a little bit roomy for my foot. And it's interesting, one of the challenges I have with this shoe is that despite being roomy in the middle part of the foot, it's a little bit tight and cramped up front. Nothing crazy, it's certainly comfortable to wear. But it's just something I've noticed with Renav Goods Co.'s style so that they tend to have certain pinch points that require the shoe to break in. So certainly maybe my foot. I've been a long-standing fan of Ray's styles, but I just wanted to let you know for those of you who are looking for fit and finish, uh, the collar of this shoe and the way this angle is projected can cause some friction if you have any Achilles issues. So that takes a bit of break in over time. Now that it's broken in, it feels good. Um, and as I mentioned, if you have long toes or uh, an unusual shape to your foot, the toe box here can feel crowded up front because the toes actually go pretty far into the shoe. So this is kind of a shorter shoe for a typical Brannock size than my particular shoe, but yet um, it's comfortable, particularly with a thick pair of socks, uh, which allows the middle portion of the shoe to fit more comfortably. So as I mentioned, Dr. Sole, raw cord half sole, um, and uh, the natural edge dressing that we employed here, which goes well with this cherry bison leather. Bison has well been regarded um, as a more rugged, uh, well and hard wearing leather. Um, there were brands such as Dax, uh, John McHale, and others who used bison leathers 
as kind of exotic leathers in the 1970s and 80s. And it seems to be coming back thanks to brands like Truman and companies such as CF Stead and others who are essentially developing new versions of those rugged leathers. And this is a natural grain leather. This is not an embossed leather. So you can see it's got a little bit more of this, this uh, gritty grain to it, which is characteristic of bison leather. So I thought that having the bison leather combined with the double leather sole, the doctor sole, the Velchwins construction would lend itself to being a loafer that's not very dainty. And it's not very dainty. But it is comfortable once you break it in. But remember, you got to break it in and take your lumps early on. I certainly had to with a couple blisters here and there. But now that it's sorted out and broken in, this shoe actually has already been worn. I'll show you the other pair has already been worn probably about 10 to 15 times at this point. And all I've done to it is brush it out um, after each wear. And you can see how well this is holding up. And again, how well the Dr. Soul um, holds over time. You can see a little bit of wheel, a heel drag right there. And maybe just a smidge of toe drag there. But gosh, overall, a well-constructed shoe built to last a lifetime. Renav Goods Co bison leather loafers Veltuin 270 degree construction natural edge welt really comes together well so reach out to ray he's well known across the instagram community as one of the paragons of indonesian boot making along with brands like tahura underhood monroe heritage uh, many others who are in that segment. So a rugged loafer, if you want it, Renav Goodsco. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.